Got no glasses. No good yelling at me. You're all prop. Mm. Come on. Mm. Computers. They all should work the same, right? That'd be no fun. We should, you know, take a few minutes out and think about uh, how many homeless people have went into Fukushima and paid a price unimaginable, not only to them, but to the people, uh, their loved ones, and the ones who try to give them comfort because of the unbelievable things that would happen to them after being exposed to such high radiation. Within three days, you break out in sores and you be, you're debilitated. And so that happened a lot. Um, when you look at the Chernobyl, 38, 28, 3,828 people, there were, um, say, there, I think there were shifts of 10, uh, 100 shifts a day on the roof alone. And most of them, the first couple of weeks, could only spend about a minute or two minutes on the roof. And they were called liquidators because um, that kind of radiation is not like a back wall. This is an x-ray, kind of like a microwave in one sense. And so their organs weren't cooked, uh, per se. They were melted. It structurally... it. It broke down the properties of the organ itself and liquefied it, I guess is one way to explain it, but not really a... Because when we say liquefy, how do you liquefy something? How do you take a piece of meat and liquefy it? Think about that one. Right? Well, x-ray. And there was a lot of that after Fukushima or um, Nagasaki and Hiroshima observed... Uh, in the victims. It's a different type of radiation than what we're talking about. Excuse me. And then again, you know, it's a whole different monster altogether. The big question to ask yourself is why would they have um, MOX fuel in number three? Maybe number four. But why would they have it anyway when you've been able to make power for 50 plus years? Uh, because uh, MOX fuel is not about making power. So they're calling that the uh, Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant is an uh, outrageous lie. Because MOX fuel, that reactor was a million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. And all the reactors at Fukushima were at least three times bigger than Chernobyl. And Chernobyl only had one third meltdown. Fukushima. 100% number one, 100% number two, 100% in MOX fuel, which is a million reactors. That's a million reactors, see? And that's not counting the fuel pools on the roof of it, of the most toxic stuff, inconceivable to humanity, that it, it, should, it doesn't exist in nature. It's created by the dark side of the human race, the hideous monsters that insist on creating uh, stuff like MOX fuel, which serves no purpose, no purpose, because we created all these nuclear bombs all over this planet. You want to think about how many times have we used them? I know people can go down the other roads where they they use them. They, they have used them quite a bit, not, not just testing. But then again, see, that's different isotopes. That's got nothing to do with the 1,300 weaponized isotopes that created that hellish thing known as MOX fuel. It's a million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. And Chernobyl was only one third of the average reactor, folks. So that's how you got to really think about it. And so you would need 13, I thought about this some more, and you would need the 1300 Geiger counters, and they all have to be calibrated, see? But then you have to, whenever you find something, you have to get somebody else to come in and verify it and with the same kind of Geiger counter. A lot of these Geiger counters are too big to carry around. A lot of these are too sophisticated and they're like almost a one-off types of because of these concoctions are, are so guarded. And it's not just what was in the Fukushima reactor, it's what's in all them other reactors. You know, India, China's, um, France, Israel, uh, not just Americans and Canadians 
and Fukushima, right? It was all uh, Russia and Germany and every other country that poked and prodded at this, thinking that this was the end all. But it's not. Right? We hear all this uh, hoo-ha about how Iran is a nuclear threat. Outside of the point, there's 49 bases, American military bases around that, with nuclear weapons, with biological chemical weapons, with aircraft carriers and nuclear submarines and jet fighters and tanks <coughs> and black hop helicopters and drones <coughs> and infiltration teams going in there and meddling and killing off politicians, replacing them with their own. Besides the 49 fully stocked bases around Iran, how are they going to get out of there? Once again, are they going to dress up as camels and sneak out and attack somebody? No, of course not. And so that's the big distraction. And if, there is, if they're looking for a war to distract and get all the media something to talk about, which is what they do with wars. That controls the media for a couple of years straight. And so they dominate everything. They drown out everything. And they have teams of spammers will go out there and spam. And there's a lot of that going on right now. And the point is, you know, 1,300 different weaponized isotopes, the significance of that is much higher than that number by far. It's so much higher than that. Because you never had a chance to know about it, and you still don't, and you and you don't have a chance to to be a, uh, to see it or deal with it. It's not like that meteorite coming at you. Well, this is what this is. It's a meteorite, an extinction level meteorite coming at our planet, and when it's said and done, if it's ever said and done, they're talking ten thousand years of hemorrhaging into the Pacific Ocean. It won't be called the Pacific Ocean soon. It'll be called a star. <laughs> because it's a radiated ocean. It's like a battery that gets more charged every day to the point where it creates lightning. It creates, uh, you know, thousand-mile typhoons. And we've seen those examples already at the Philippines where it flattened everything in that country. Imagine that happened in Canada. Imagine if that happened in the States. A hundred-mile wide F4 tornado got it to your country because that's what happened that's exactly what happened and that was a direct result of the two typhoons converging over fukushima because that whole country is a, a dump a nuclear dump site i used to say in some of my videos we should dig up japan and put it on fukushima but the reality of it is we should dig up all the countries on the coastline of the Pacific Ocean in the future and put it but then we still got the Pacific Ocean is is a big soup of radiation. I shouldn't use those two words together. But it's a big soup it's a big hideous pit from hell till the end of time there's nothing you can do about it. And it has to suffocates all their life in the next couple of years. And the headlines that have been coming out lately are just astronomically frightening folks. Everybody's starting to ask the same question, you know, what the hell is going on with the Pacific Ocean? Because as that plume moves, it leaves nothing behind. There is no oxygen. And once again, for anybody that's not familiar, you can take a little drop of water out of the middle of the ocean, any part of the ocean, put it under a microscope, and it'll be millions and millions of these little creatures. Well, radiation, a, a becquel will flip over a grain of sand. And say something's putting out 500 becquels a second to isotopes. Well, that's 500 grains a second it can flip. Now, that's also, f you know, 500 uh, per second of these little, just that one little thing can do for a billion years, can kill th those little tiny lights and that little drop of water out of any spot in the ocean that you looked at under a microscope in a petri dish. And there's millions of these little creatures. But you can kill all of them with a single isotope, no problem at all. And so when the ocean is full of that, and that is the very basic... Of, of what feeds the creatures that produce the protoplankton, that produces the oxygen from the Pacific. And the Pacific, well, the oceans in general produce 50% of all the oxygen on the planet. And so, but we're talking about 1,300 different isotopes. We go and we look for cesium-137, because it's got a 30-year, 29, I'm wrong, 29.6-year half-life shelf. <laughs> the uranium's got a billion. Don't bother mentioning that, or the strontium or the plutonium, that'll never go away.
I was here long before we were, and we'll be here long after. And it's gallows left. Be here long after we're gone. Long, 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 long time after we're gone, folks. Long time. And there'll be no other creatures left on the planet. This will destroy. This doesn't see. This doesn't mutate. This is not where you get a bit of radiation and you get an extra third eye. This is radiation where you die, where everything dies. Nothing can survive us. And so if we don't put all of our universities together on this planet and come together as a species instead of this race devoid that's been ruling us since the beginning of time, we all have the same hopes and dreams, right, for our loved ones. Everybody wants just a little spot to live and be left alone. Everybody wants a vehicle or transportation. And everybody wants a coffee table and a couch and a table and a chair and a toilet seat. For sure. Right, Zoe? Snoring again. Can't blame her. And, but everybody has these hopes, same hopes and dreams all over the world, no matter what your race, what your religion is. And I know because I've talked to these people for many, many years. And that was one thing that really, uh, it, it was, I don't know why, but so, that, that really impacted me. That people all, it didn't matter who they were. And because of music, I get to deal with the artists a lot. And so you actually got someone that's tangible that you can relate to, see? And But you hear the same things from all of them. They, they, they literally, it's in their words, it's in their songs, it's their heart and their soul, see? And it doesn't matter what country or race or religion, if they were good, they go in my favorites. And they've been, YouTube's been gutting that straight now for about a year and a half, just like everything else on the internet, they've been gutting. And just getting rid of it, it's the competition they don't want out there. <clears throat> and I covered that extensively for a year. And But what I know about this planet is that we all have that capability of coming together as a species. All the universities and producing 4,800 academic journals every day on how to deal with Fukushima, on how to deal with the 1,000 mile F4, 5, 6, that are not even recognized yet, tornadoes, 100 mile wide, 200 mile wide, 300 mile tornadoes that are coming around our coastlines and will come up to Canada and the United States in no time at all. They'll destroy uh, most of the coastline in the near future because that's the nature of the beast that we're talking about. We're talking about a radiated, uncontained, not only ocean, but the troposphere, the stratosphere, and then all the clouds over it. And so normally every day there's thousands and thousands of miles of cloud picking up moisture and moving it over the continents. That's how it's worked since the beginning of time. That's why the trees are able to grow and the mountains are full. And because uh, this ocean, because it's on, it's, it, they say it's uncontainable, but it's not. We can actually, can't, we can't do things, see? We can't change a lot of the things, obviously. We've got to learn to live with radiation. But we can never get away from that. But why should we uh, just, you know, it's like that big meteorite coming at the sky and all the media is going, no, that's not a meteorite. That's normal. Don't worry, folks. If it was something to worry about, we would tell you. And so every day you get your own telescope finally and you go look at it and you can see it and you call them up and you say, well, I bought a telescope and I, and I got pictures and I put it up on my Facebook page and 100,000 people came today and said it's real. No, it's not real. It's, uh, it might look like real. There's something wrong with your telescope. And they just won't give it up. They just won't admit to it. That's what we're dealing with. And they probably believe that lie, but all they really do is read a, a teleprompter. And they get so many of these things they read all day long, they don't even remember the stuff they're saying they're reading. Some of them like it. That's why they got the job, obviously. Psychopathic. But the majority of... The people out there won't believe it unless the media confirms it for them. And if that happens in the whole planet, because the media is so stupid and so irresponsible and so uh, evil, that it, it might be the last big scoop of the world, so we better get it, better do a good job, and they'll terrorize this entire planet. Because it's like uh, they become irrelevant if that comes out on top of that. Once Fukushima, the true horror of the dead Pacific, just another storm or two of 235 mile an hour gust or 195 mile an hour sustained wind. See, this one blew them off course anyway, right? It literally blew them right the hell off, right out of their minds. 
Because a 195 mile an hour wind, folks, that doesn't belong on Earth, not in those places. It doesn't, you know, this is something that strips the land, strips the trees, strips everything. And everything becomes airborne. Everything is airborne. So like a 300 mile storm will pick up boulders and they'll go along like rain or like snow in a snowstorm or rain in a, in a rainstorm. And so instead of getting hit with rain or snow, you're going to be getting hit with bullets and trees and big chunks of metal, sharp metal, and just houses that are shredded that'll travel. Like, see, normally a tornado, an F4 tornado, might travel a few miles. These things traveled hundreds of miles to first go. This is huge. This is a direct result of those Beck wolves, you know, that are energy. I call them Beckwells, but I mean, this is the numbers are so astronomical. I don't know why anybody bothers with Beckwells, only that everybody's familiar with it. But it's like millions and millions of Hiroshima bombs have gone into the ocean already, just from this one, not from everything else, which I cover many times, and everybody know that, but just from Fukushima every single day, 4.3 billion gallons a day running over the cores, the melted cores, otherwise it wouldn't be on the site. The site would be a big sinkhole, it would be a big supernova there. See, there has to be something going on because uh, the cores don't just go out. They don't just, oh, you know, that was okay, that was a bit of fun, they had some nuclear fission going on here, that was that worked out pretty good, let's give it up now after a few days. It doesn't work that way. It has to be buried by all that water that's coming out from underneath it, the aquifers, the rivers, the natural rivers that run down the mountain. And it flushes it all straight out into the ocean. And then all the stuff they're spraying on all the site and all the things, that uh, all the, there's melted reactors, the three melted reactors, all the stuff they're spraying in that just runs straight down to the bedrock and then the, the back mountain floods it right out into the ocean. And then the Pacific brine whips, whisses it away from the Japanese coastline. That's why they only go a couple of miles offshore to test. And they're only testing for strontium or... Um, Cesium. Sometimes you test with strontium. But you need 1,300 iron counters. 1,300. That are... And then you need to release what each one of these isotopes are. Because that MOX fuel that was in Fukushima, that's a million reactors hemorrhaging into the ocean every day. See? That's another way to look at that. And that's a realistic way to look at that. That's a million. That's a million Chernobyls sitting down there on the bedrock, if we're lucky, with the river, hopefully with the river flowing over it. Imagine how insane it is to even say those words. But it took quite a while for it to go down there. But maybe not all three of them are gone down there. Maybe one of them got so much water underneath it, it's slowing it down. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't think water could, I think it'd have to be just water. It has to sit on bedrock. That's why they build these sites the way they do, right? So the, the cores can melt down and hit the bedrock. And the theory is, uh, the ocean comes in on top of it, or a river runs underneath it, and that's built into the system. And so, that don't go into the models. That, that for some reason, is not inputted into the models, right? See, that, that model is based upon a two-week dispersion. It's a peer-reviewed academic model, of the first couple of weeks amid it released by TEPCO, but we're almost up to a thousand days. I think December the 6th is a thousand days. Will be a thousand days of a minimum three to four hundred tons. In reality, around 4.3, 4.2 billion gallons a day, because it used to be three million gallons a minute, one for each of the cores to keep them cool and to produce boiling water. A million gallons a minute when they normally operated. Certainly, they didn't operate at 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures, which is hotter than the sun, which is nuclear, unabated, uncontrolled, out of control, nuclear, uh, self-nuclear fusion, you know? And so this this stuff is releasing for the longest while. Just it's probably all gone. All 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 the rods and three, uh, one, two, and three are probably gone. And then the pools all above it are all missing, right? Um, let me scroll down for a picture for a second. It didn't scroll. I'll get it. Hang on.
See, they put a shelter over that, but they can't get in there, you know, with a tractor. They can't get in there with tools. They can't get in there and build scaffolds because of all the rods uh, that were in that pool above it. And deep, like how you seen that first picture of how the building got blown up, you can imagine. Well, I couldn't survive that intact anyway. And it's all full of the most toxic stuff imaginable where a human can't possibly go. And if you try to get in there, there'd be a stack of dead bodies. And then somebody might crawl in and use the dead bodies to block the x-ray. Uh, x-rays that are coming out of it that will cook them like a chicken, so to speak, or melt them. Melt them. It's really something else, how potent and crazy and unnecessary. There's no need for it. The world never said, hey, go ahead and make the most evilest, craziest, mad shit you could ever put together for us. Nobody done that. This was seriously evil people that would make this kind of fuel. It does not for making energy. It's for making something that could probably crack the moon in two. They're, they're trying to take something that's a million times worse than any other reactor on the planet that's now missing because it blew its top like a firecracker. And it threw rods for up to two miles away pieces of it, but certainly within a mile, chunks of it that are so radiated, they have to go with bulldozers, remote control bulldozers, and bulldoze them under uh, topsoil and stuff. It's just insane, insidious. And every time it rains and snows, that stuff gets washed down through the sewer systems, which are all radiated throughout the entire Japan country. All the sewer systems are radiated, everything. They only check the water for like guy dying with an eight day shelf life or something. You hear the idiots up in the media referring to eight day shelf life. Like these people are literally murderers. The trolls that go onto the comment sections, they're, they're murdering people with their lies and their craziness. Like if anybody's looking at anything else, not trying to work it out, not trying to bring it to what it's going to be in the near future, which it's going to be just dominate everybody's life because they they let it go for so long. They, they were hoping we would all go back to sleep and ignore it, but that ain't, that ain't happening. That is never going to happen. And it won't be long now because you have a dead Pacific Ocean. What do you think is going to happen then? What do you really truly think? How are they going to hide it, a dead Pacific Ocean? How are they going to do that? It's pretty well dead now, see? And when it strikes something like Canada and the United States, which is what they've been able to do, because there's so much media coming out of here and so many uh, impoverished countries uh, covet Canada and the United States for some reason. I mean, yes, we're the most privileged Canada. It's Canada, we're so privileged. I understand that part. That I, I understand it 100%. I don't have to lock my doors. I don't have to look for fresh water. I don't have to look for berries. I don't go to the shops for candy bars. I go in the woods look for berries. And I'm so privileged to do that. I can go pick just dandelion anywhere and clean it and start eating it right on the, right on the spot. And that's extraordinarily privileged. There's 27,000 children dying every day of dysentery, diarrhea, and pneumonia, which is easily curable for a couple of pennies. It's not, And it's not like it's... Uh, a valuable resource to do it either. But Bill Gates went over there and vaccinated over a billion people in India so he can save 600 people a year from getting smallpox and polio and only 1% to 1% of 1% of those would have died from polio. But there's 27,000 children died every single day. And so Bill Gates is not going to live forever. So why did he spend a number of years in India again giving everybody this vaccine when there was 27,000 children dying every day of dysentery, diarrhea and pneumonia? What kind of sick and twisted and demented logic goes into that one? And how all the media says, he's going to save all the people. He's going to save all the children from dying. It's so much, it's such an ugly, hideous double cross upon humanity. And so people donate all kinds of money and they don't even, they don't even do the basic, ask the basic question. Why is he doing polio with all our money? When there's 27,000 children dying every day of dysentery, pneumonia, and diarrhea. Why? I can't even answer that one. I can't answer that, see? But what does it really, 
You know, when you look at Fukushima and you don't hear the media talking, does that make any sense to you either? Of the massive amount of cancers that's gone airborne because of these bells of hell? I mean, my goodness. Everything you see in there is so contaminated that if you tried to make a 50-yard dash, you wouldn't make it. You would die. You would end up, and no one could ever go get your body anywhere in there. You can't get in there and climb around. Well, you could, but you ain't coming back. Ever. A hundred years, maybe. You might go and get your skeleton to come up with some technology. There should be a sarcophagus over that. But they're trying to do damage control to it. They don't know. I don't know if they know what they're doing. No one knows what they're doing. They've been offline now since October 25th, uh, 2013. Oh, yeah, there's one, one thousandth of one percent is online in Japan. A couple of Twitters, a couple of Facebooks. And we don't even know where their IP address really truly is. We don't know where their servers are to. And they don't talk about Fukushima. And so there's a bunch of slaves uh, impoverished uh, or imprisoned people now in Japan that are being murdered. And uh, they've been cut off from the world and they can't tell their story. So that's the North Korea now. That's the new so-called North Korea of the planet is Japan. In fact, I think I'll do the whole video tomorrow night on Japan, the new North Korean uh, death camps. Because every city in Japan is a death camp. Because you haven't got 1,300 Geiger counters and 1,300 people that knows how to use it for the first eight hours. And then you need another 1,300 people for the next eight hours. And if you find anything, you got to bring in somebody else with another Geiger counter to double check that. And then once you do that, you got to get an expert to take the spectrometers and all these other uh, devices and verify it. And then you got to dig up that city. If you want to go to the legitimate route, then you got to dig up six inches of topsoil all through the entire country of Japan, and Vietnam, and Canada, and America, and blah, 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 blah. Just because all the contaminants that have came over through the jet streams. And jet streams are traveling at 100 miles an hour. That's uh, so every 24 hours, 2,400 miles. And so two and a half days, three days, it's pounding into California and pounding into Alaska and pounding into British Columbia. These death plumes. And then the rain and the snow. And like Radchick was saying the other night, how the snow aggregates more of uh, more of it. And a friend of mine sent me an intro, a really, actually, a really valuable link uh, two days ago here in town. And uh, she had found a link of a, a company that just got a huge contract to Chemtrail. And uh, that's important because as the radiation shows up, they got to go out and do more Chemtrails. And if you look at the Chernobyl video below, you'll see they were Chemtrailing with a helicopter uh, over. Um, Chernobyl for a long time after and it used to block out the visibility but this was a really heavy concoction to try to keep it from rising up there's 3,800 miles around Chernobyl 64 by 64 by 64 by 64 kilometers rather 3,800 miles that are um, it's it's uh, 30 times 59 billion Beckwalls per cubic meter I can't remember the number, so many dots and zeros and blah. And so you buy right C and we, those 1,300 guard counters, need, we need that for every community. And they say you need all those technicians for each community and you need three shifts a day for each community. So if you've got a community with 1,000 people, you need to bring in 3,800 more people with Geiger counters and they got to catch that stuff as it's coming in, so you need 24-hour shifts. And if you can't do that, then um, you have to assume the worst. And that if you live under the jet stream that comes over, well, that's not a very good spot. It's not a spot you can stay. And you got to think about how the oceans work. And so you got to get away from the Pacific because as these storms get bigger, they're going to rake this planet. It's going to be worse than Mars. You see Mars. These, these, like you're going to see five, six, seven hundred mile an hour, three, four hundred mile storms or F-10 tornadoes 
But until, like you say, a tornado is usually only going to last for a few miles, maybe a quarter mile wide. That one in the Philippines, that was worse than any tornado. 235 mile an hour steady gust on top of the steady winds, 195 miles an hour. That was hell on earth. The wit, the, the air, the air was, was a projectile. The air was like a blender because it had all that shrapnel from all the buildings and it was whisking them along at 195 miles an hour. Think about a truck coming down the road with a big stick hanging off it and it's going at 195 miles an hour and you're riding on your bicycle and it hits you. What do you think is going to happen? Telephone pole hanging off that truck. Well, 195 mile an hour will launch everything. It'll launch bricks for tens of miles at a time. Inconceivable. Like a brick at that speed would wreck a car. So imagine what a tree will do. And once these get higher, it'll pick up boulders. And so your ear becomes like, the ear becomes a mashing machine. That's what happened in the Philippines. See? And so we got to get to work on dealing with this. And they're into chemtrailing right now all the time. They have been for 50 years. But the, it was localized where they were dumping it. But now it's worse. Because now you got a Pacific Ocean, all the clouds are getting picked up and it's dragging it all over your continents. And it won't be long before the entire ocean is dead. And so this is not a game. We want all the universities on the planet doing peer review academic studies, 4,200, 4,800 a day. We want three a minute thousand page academic journals and how to deal with this creature that's coming at us. It's not going to get better, it's going to get much worse because the hemorrhaging is not going to stop for 10,000 years if we leave them alone. Right? They captured Japan themselves. They say they're worried about the terrorists getting in there and stealing stuff and they got a state secrecy act but there's 140 Yakuza contractors. They can steal whatever they want. The rods were blown all over the place. Who the hell is going to try to go in there? Do you think James Bond's going to go in there and sneak between those tanks? <laughs> They'll know because his body will be laying there. It's not going to happen, see? You're not getting place. You're not getting close to that place because of those explosions I showed you early through rods everywhere. Nobody else is getting close. they got a little patch to get in and out of, and everybody's getting their deadly doses. The people that are going in there, it's unimaginable. I can't imagine what their life is like when they go, when they go home at night. If they get lucky, if they're not the homeless who are kept there, locked away look at the video below on Chernobyl <coughs> and these people were running in and in two or three minutes they had a they had a lethal dose and they run out because they can't die there because everybody will have to move their bodies and many will die and they would sacrifice men to do every little chore so imagine being a guy who says you got to go in and do this we got to get that done and they done the military and the military unquestionably went and got their deadly doses. That's what's happened many times in the last nine, uh, almost thousand days of Fukushima. But they're, they won't get a badge. We won't know their names. And their your graveyards in Japan now are radiated from the dead bodies that are already filling it up. That's a fact. From the people who went in there and ingested all these isotopes and all this strontium, plutonium, and the 1300 this weaponized creature that we can't even wrap our minds around because Unit 3 is a million times worse than Chernobyl. Every day, hemorrhaging into the Pacific Ocean. It's a big distraction, the tanks. It's a big distraction, the 300 to 400 tons they emit to every day. It means nothing. Do the real numbers, right? You've seen, you know, look at Eight foot high. You got to use uh, tractors to fill them up, and they got nothing. Like they were burning some of this and liberating all that hideous isotopes right back into the environment, and go back out and scratch it all up at the people's gardens and off the side of the road, looking for the big particles. Right? That's all they're doing. They're, they're taking six inches of topsoil off everything, just like I told you all along. That's a that's a prime example right there, because the particulates where they're getting atomized, uh, you know, for years in the bowels of hell, there's still some big particulates that don't make it all the way down, but get atomized or broken down enough, gets carried up, and the typhoon picks it up, and 20 minutes later, it's all over Japan itself, all over prefectures. It's all over the place, see? And that's uh, x-ray particles you're talking about on top of that. Extraordinarily 
deadly for children. Unbelievable, frightening. And we have unleashed this upon the planet, the entire planet, see? This is not a Japanese thing. This is the entire planet. Till the end of time. We're at war with this planet now, till the end of time. Because there was only three indigenous isotopes. Don't believe the lies they try to tell you about all these indigenous isotopes. There's only th everything's based up after three natural ones. That's why the core, or the core Earth does the things it does. It's because of all the, the natural it depleted, or not depleted, but the natural uranium that has been already here for over four billion years and is still quite active. And it's good for another four billion years. And we weaponize that and, and never use it in a weapon, never have to use it in a weapon. It's pointless to use in a weapon. Use it to test all over the planet, which is a total different isotope. And when people say bananas and people say uh, potatoes, right, for background radiation or airplane or sun, or their samples, right, to get their personal samplers for the Geiger counter radiation. That's not the deadly isotopes we're talking about. That's the stupidest argument you can imagine. That's an ins so insignificant. That's so, that does not belong in the conversation ever under any circumstances, is airplane background radiation or any kind of this uh, indigenous radiation. We're talking about Isotopes so fearsome. Some of this stuff can put out a million beats a second. A million beats a second. Imagine that in your body growing tumors where you can't get your arm down in the near future for people because they're inundated with that. Your communities are awash with it. Your clothing, uh, everything stands to be, every time it rains now, it's frightening. Every time it snows, it's terrifying. Every time it blows, it's are you liberating these isotopes that are already... But they get absorbed into the water and get into the ecosystem. And so the pollen and everything else becomes mutated and radiated. Uh, and that's actually the... If that's all done, we could live with that part. But this stuff is, is endless till a, a billion years down the road. The ocean is dying. The next ocean it will be dying in the near future. In the very near future, within a few years. Because of all the clouds that are picking it up. A lot of that strontium and plutonium and uranium is staying at the surface. So the clouds are taking that up and bringing it to you very quick. But the scales, the academic studies of the tracers and the bobbers in the ocean, and then you, they input a two weeks of data from Fukushima. See, you don't need to really know any more than that, only the fact that there's a mid of three and 400 tons coming out a day. And if you look deeper, you realize the cores, they're only on the site because the cores are underwater. And so all that radiation, it's a million and one reactor times any other reactor on the planet potency of isotopes being released into the environment. They're supposed to be in a, in a sarcophagus till the end of time. It's not even ever. Those isotopes are not supposed to be found anywhere. After every war since 91, we found isotopes in the mountains from the cores. Because the isotopes, they, they travel right around this planet. And... Like, uh, a human can land on this planet in a billion years. After you ingest one of those isotopes, they're going to get serious cancer and die. In a billion years, it'll still kill you. And if it gets in your water supply, like these death plumes coming across and then getting rained down into your water supply, and, and you know, then the animals are all drinking that water too, and the biodiversity depends upon that water. Water is life. Water is God, period. Without water, God is useless. God, <laughs> you can't have a God without water, period. Because without water, there is no life. You can have all the stories you want, but if you ain't got water, there ain't no life, period. And we're killing water on this planet. We're literally killing water. And water is one of the most powerful things your body can ever take. If you talk to water, you can physically change the structure of the water. Water's had this structure, and it's it's in tune with your body. It, it's something special. It's in tune with the animals. It's in tune with your plants, the, the biohabitat of the life itself, the troposphere, and so all that strontium and radiation and all those uh, plutonium, everything else like that, that gets up into all that water, and that water is carried around the planet, and all of that intermingles with everything on this planet. So we got to learn how to deal with this. We can't ignore this another minute. Not another minute. 
We got to get to work on this. We got to stop with the nonsense. And everybody's got to grow up. And everybody's got to get to work on this. Like it means the very existence of humanity. Like it's a big friggin' meteorite. Like a good old fashioned Hollywood movie coming right at you. Well, this is the real thing. This is the real meteorite coming at us. This is a extinction level event coming at us. That's already here. But I say coming at us because I want the concept that we got to go do something, that we have a chance to do something. For a lot of the planet, we don't have a chance because those death plumes that have flew across this planet have made sure of that, have made short work of that. And that creature there is inside of that. But they can't get inside of that. Now, you can't go and walk in that building anymore, ever, till the end of time. You can't walk inside of that. The fumes from all those rods and the radiation, and the noble gases and everything else, you can't walk in there. Nobody can. Hell, you can't even walk up to that building, let alone walk in that building. And so the pictures that we see of the destruction of the building are so important because we will never get those pictures again, ever, till the end of time. Because they got them wrapped up in that Kevlar. And so those pictures that we got are precious. See? That picture is precious now. Because they, they, they're trying to hide everything from you. And they don't... They didn't take that building down. They built that shelter over it. See, you won't. You won't see any PR uh, photoshops of them putting welders in there, chopping stuff up, because the whole world will know it's photoshopped. Because nobody can get in there and chop that stuff up. Because there's rods everywhere, and like you say, a piece of rod that big, I can't finish the sentence, and nobody can come get my body. Ever, and that's all over that place. These pellets. Think about sixty rods. And each rod is full of pellets. You know, pellets are about that big, right? So pellets, say pellets are about that big. And so the 60 rods are 12 feet long. There's around, and they're in a bundle. And there's 50, they weigh around 1,500 pounds. And a piece of rod that big, say, no, say one of those rods, one of those 60 rods and all those pellets can kill every mammal and a human on this planet. And just a gram of that stuff uh, can produce more atoms nuclear isotope atoms than all the grains of sands on earth and British Columbia has 27,000 islands up here 27,000 islands it take you 71 years to go visit every island if you visit one a day but a lot of these islands are 50 miles long and uh, most of these not many people have even seen them let alone walked on them that's true, and I spent many, many years amongst those islands, and I probably visit around 4,000 of those islands, but you certainly could never visit all the beaches on those islands. And all the beaches on that islands, up in British Columbia, are, are uh, golden sand beaches. And then the shoreline is full of logs. And Radchick, uh, on her nuke, that uh, nuke pro blog, i get that link and put it underneath here, are talking about uh, checking uh, stuff coming over uh, from Fukushima's tsunami for radiation. And that's really smart because Fukushima had 40 to 50 feet of water in update that place. And then it blew up and the water was receding. And so the rods went up to two miles in the air, like the picture I showed you earlier at the beginning of this video. The rods went up in the air and they landed on all that stuff. And that stuff washed out to sea. And that's the stuff that's coming our way. And it might have washed off that along the way, but it very well, and if it was on it, then that, those, those big pieces coming over would be contaminated, highly contaminated. And so that's brilliant. I'll find that link and put it underneath here after. I'll tell you the name of it, though. Hang on. And I'll come over to the comment section because I forgot I, would, I forgot I was streaming. I'm, talk, I'm so used to sitting here and talking. So I really, truly do forget sometimes what I'm doing. But I'm just talking about nuclear stuff. Um, hang on. Nuke Pro, yeah. Nuke Professional dot blogspot dot ca. I gotta remember to put that link under the video. Let me come over and say hi in the comment section because all these fantastic, incredible people saying hi to me and sharing information 
making fun of me and everything else, which is really cool. Um, 44 minute rant, my goodness. I'm gonna have to get one of those little timers so I don't do that to people. Not all in one go, right? That's not very politically correct. And, um, hi, Janet. Hi, Paula. Hi, Gil Games. I was, uh, Lyraina Real. See, I almost got that. And you put it there in the comment section. I didn't, I didn't hook it and pay attention. Let me try it over here, because maybe... So, hi, Miss Milky the Clown. Hi, sweetie. We're always so happy, so privileged to see you. And that's what I mean, you know. There's people out there that we always got to, that have done everything they can, and just endless sacrifices to get the information out there. And that's why I have a bunch of people under my video. A bunch of uh, heroes under my video, I should say. Patriots to Earth itself. Um, that that made a, a choice in life. That their legacy wasn't going to be looking back and said, I wish I said something, or I wish I tried, or I wish or I should have. They won't have that burden. Hi, cockroach. Hi, Starlight. Hi, Doug. Big Now TV. Hey, how's it going? Hi, Rocco. Let me come down and say hi to a couple people. That's my favorite part. It truly is. Hi, yay, sales. I'll get back to you in a moment. Do you think uh, the Maritimes will be a safer place to be? I'll get back to you in a bit. Hi, David. Hey. Hi, Moments. Nothing more. Um, Charles. Bill, hi Bill, Janet again, Miss Milky again, hi, I said Paula, uh, let me come down, hi Reramp, Reramp, hi Mickey, I'll get to you, hi Nuber Magic, always happy to see you man, you're awesome, we really like you, I watch a lot of your old stuff. You're just like me, man, right? You just kept learning and learning and learning, got your confidence, right? And then you just, you said, well, that's the best I could do, and that's good enough. You didn't look back, and that's a good thing for us. Hi, Big Now. Hi, Doug. Um, let me come down make sure, because who knows, I missed here. Camshaft. See, I get a few. I don't get depressed, because I can come and read the comments after, see? I come read the comments, and I do, of course, because there's so much there. I want to make sure I cover all, I don't know, right, who's going to reach out. I, and I'm not going to take that chance that I'll miss it. So it's just like, it's a lot of work, but it's it's probably the only thing I really, truly enjoy is reading the comments after. I really, truly do. I think it's fantastic. I don't even care about trolls. That's irrelevant. It means nothing to me. Sometimes I use it for a bit of fun, but... Like, how can you know what the mood is out there unless you really try your best, you know? And that's all you can really ask for, is you tried your best. And so I see that. I see uh, there's so many smart people out there, and that's what I say all the time. There's just so much. We're, we're so lucky to be out of time and so lucky to find so many people that really, truly get it. And I look for people trying to debunk everything. Because that's always fun. And uh, hopefully they're right. You know, that's that would be really cool. And that used to be cool. And that could be cool again, but it's not, unfortunately. But still, it's an interesting way to see what the issues that people have on trying to... And I understand that. There's so many, it's so many facets to nuclear. And so 1,300 Geiger counters, I thought, would at least stop that argument for one video so that people can finally say, oh... Now I get it, right? And I thought that was a really important thing because they don't have to watch the video, right? They don't have to wrestle with their conscience. 
all of a sudden there's a title and it kind of encompasses everything I'm, I've been saying and over and over and over in order to, and I think that's because I used that and, and I'll tell you a funny story this is so funny this was awesome that was brilliant I was sitting around a bunch of friends today men and one of the boys there wasn't quite up to speed and so he was asking normal questions and he said well I'm just going to go and buy a Geiger counter I guess right because this is really worrisome and one, one of my other friends there's a couple of them jumped in, at, went to jump in and go, well, you need 1,300 Geiger counters and they're all going to be calibrated. <laughs> and so I was over sitting in a corner and I was going like this. And I was like, yes, yes. And then all of a sudden I hear all this laughter. When I look up, everybody's looking at me. And I was, but I had like sunk into my little moan. I was like, yes, this is working so well. But everybody kind of picked up on that. That was hilarious. I'm not kidding either. That was so funny. Because I seen the fruit of my work. I didn't have to say nothing. All of a sudden, everybody was like, you got to buy 13-liter Geiger counters. you got to get them all calibrated for this subject. <laughs> I wish I had a camera going because you can't beat that stuff. When all of a sudden, everybody just, like that, I didn't realize that everybody had got it like that. But everybody truly gets it. And it makes sense, see? So how are you going to know 100%? Are you just going to take their words about Celsius? CC137 or the eight-day iodine? or the banana routine, background radiation from an airplane, and put that into the equation? Like if you put that in my equation, in my equation thinks it spits it out and says, contaminated, wash down, sterilize, junk, 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 junk alert, junk alert. Because a banana background radiation, if you ate bananas your entire life, they'd kill you, right? But it wouldn't be from the radiation. Uh, you only need one of these isotopes to kill you that we're talking about. Just one for your loved one, your child, your friends, your family. And so that's why we're here every night because you need to know about stuff like that. You need to get informed and you need to take into consideration that you can't live. And uh, hi, Camel, Carrier, Carry V. I haven't got my glasses. I can't find them. Oh, I put them in my pocket when I went to town today. I usually got all kinds of glasses, but I got them all poked away somewhere the last couple of days. So we were asking the question about where would you go? Well, I don't know where you live, right? So it's a hard question. But if you're in Canada, you're going to be heading east. And if you're in the United States, you're going to be heading east. And you got to get off the Pacific Ocean, in other words. And you got to look at the jet streams and how that applies to your country, because it's coming from Japan. First and foremost, the really heavy non-emergency uh, stuff is coming from Japan in a, just a couple of days. Each time there's a plume coming out of there. But now that the ocean is full, and this has been going on behind closed doors, they didn't tell us there was three or 400 tons every day going into the ocean. And then the media doesn't report right doesn't give you any importance and so it's so easy to get lulled away from it and then when you look down that rabbit hole you see how many people had to die at Chernobyl there's a million people that sacrificed themselves at Chernobyl to get that 30 percent melted reactor under control and Fukushima has uh, Japan's gone into radio silence we don't know and then the Yakuza's, the mob, has been grabbing homeless Shanghai and people, literally, and uh, just the vulnerable, most vulnerable people who have no skills, no knowledge, and then no after knowledge of what what they should do for the rest of try to do for to stay alive, right? They're not getting those opportunities, and we live in that time and that day, where. Uh, how would you put it? Like it's so bad, dear. And it truly is so bad that we need that entire planet, every academic journal on this planet, flipping to trying to deal with Fukushima. But in order to do that, you got to know what's going on. In order to do that, the world has to wake up and accept that we are in so much trouble and that if we wait for the chaos to take its play its course, out, and it's going to, and they're setting the stage for that, they're looting your pensions, they're killing you with GMO foods by removing all the nutrients out of it and putting formaldehydes and glossophates in it, which are carcinogenics. 
And then you turn your whole environment into a, a, a radio wave, which works to enhance each other. And like seeds won't grow alongside of your wireless. If you put seeds to try to germinate them alongside a wireless uh, outlet, it, they won't germinate. And we have so much of that on our planet just from radio waves and satellite waves now it's unimaginable. And this is a new thing. And you can set these waves at the same frequency as your body and your brain which are, and calibrate them to really affect you. And that's what they're planning on doing. They're actually doing that with the uh, computers and the screens and that. They do that with the cell phones too. Subliminal messaging right there in front of you and you don't even see it because you can only see in certain in a, like a format you see in a certain very very fine format but you can buy night vision goggles you can see in the dark see and so there's other spectrums that you could see in but and if you don't have that uh, device to, to decipher it you can't see what's going on that's happening to you all the time and it always has they've always been using that stuff against you uh, let me come over and start the takes no more magic thanks buddy Miss Milky the Clown, sweetie, you're such a sweetheart. We're so happy that you do the things you do. And just like Rad Chick, we're so proud uh, of the stuff she has done. And everybody, you know, that participates and always helps each other and supports all the, all the right uh, networks out there is so vital to the things that we are trying to accomplish. And these every little thing is a win. Every little thing you do is another step of a win. So if a million people are doing these little things, imagine the difference it, it ultimately makes, even though we don't realize it. And a million people doing just two or three little extra things, like telling a friend or telling someone in the shop about check out Fukushima. It's these little things. That's the movement that terrorizes them, the most terrifies them, the system the most. They can't control that. See? They can't control your speech where you go. And you need to have a solid narrative, right? And don't, like Nuber Magic says, don't trust anything. Research everything yourself. You have to do that. So that you can learn. You can only learn by doing that, right? Do your homework, right, Nuber Magic? Thank you. Hi, Paula. Um, I'll come up because it looks like... Hang on a second. Here. My computer getting funny on me. 57 minutes. That was a really good, that was a really good video. I'll link all these comments after. Enjoy reading them. Uh, that's a hundred percent. And Miss Milky and Crow, yeah, <laughs> good one. I just wanted to come down and see if I, if there's anybody I should have said hello that I haven't said hello to already. Stormy cloud, missing sky, see it? camshaft, ha ha ha, high A V A nav eight. Uh, let me come up, make sure. I build need. Looks like uh, Ruben, Jerry, hi Jerry, Doug. I didn't see you guys till then. Um, David, Horton, Atomic Cockroach, Starlight, Nuber Magic, Miss Milky the Clown. We got Robert. Hi, Robert uh, Galinas. I can't pronounce it. Kerry V again. Yeah, go ahead, Bill. You bet. Moments, nothing more. Mama Knox. Jester. Yalsileus, uh, Arinel, Real, see, I can't say it, but you know who I'm talking to. And that I think that the system can't ignore it anymore because it it destroys them too, see. And so they were hoping that we would all go back to sleep and they can just poison us all. And. That's the whole problem, right? Right now, everybody on this chat room right now is smarter than the people who ran countries, say, 100 years ago. So if you went back 100 years, your intelligence would make you the smartest person, literally, in that country. And that's what knowledge is all about, was you liberated yourself with knowledge. And knowledge empowered you. And that's why knowledge was locked away. And that's why 4,200 peer-review academic journals are locked away every day in the ivory towers of Elsevier, Springer and Wiley, but your children produced it, your tax money paid for it. And we have to flip those resources, those precious resources now, 
to deal with the meteorite called Fukushima that is coming at us and is is attempting to be an extinction level event upon this planet. And so we have to deal with that. We can't ignore it anymore. We can't uh, back away because we don't need to because every day we win the battle quite quite a lot more as we get more intelligence, right? We, we, we get more knowledge because I'm out there scouring everything. I'm watching everybody. I'm listening. I'm reading everything and everybody's doing the same thing. And so all together, we hopefully we all enhance each other synergistically. So we all help each other directly and indirectly. That's how I see it. it always seems to work for me. I'm learning from everybody. I'm not just taking one source. I'm taking everybody and I'm weighing it, researching it, and then trying to give a presentation each night so that new people and and myself included can get another fresh concept of what's really truly going on. Remember, check all your 1300 Geiger counter batteries before you go out each day. Thanks, folks. Hey, Miss Milky. Good night, everybody. New were magic. Everybody else participated. I really enjoyed it. Looking forward to the comments after. We'll see you tomorrow night. And uh, for the Fukushima Horror Show, that'll never go away, unfortunately. And so we have to come every day.